no need to fear. Underdog is here. Time again for the Underdog Show, starring that champion of champions, Underdog. <laughs> and True Blue Odie Colony were making their annual inspection of the Bongo Congo Airport. Little did they know that King Leonardo was soon to be faced with a shocking surprise. Hmm. Chewing gum machines seem to be in order. Our benches still seem to be hard and uncomfortable enough. And I see we still have a sufficient supply of out-of-date newspapers and magazines. Yes, I'd say that everything... Ah! What's going on over there? An American tourist, Your Majesty. He seems to be upset. He does indeed. Come, True Blue Odie. Perhaps we can be of service. Of course, sire. I say, my good man, what seems to be the trouble? 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 I'll tell you what the trouble is. This guy... Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> Hey, what's with you and those duds? You got those crazy skins on for a costume ball or something? Costume ball? Duds? I am Leonardo Lion, king of all Bongo Congo. And these are the royal duds. Uh, skins. Uh, uh, this is the royal attire. Yeah? Well, maybe you can help me. This bird tells me I'm stuck in this dump overnight because my plane needs repairs. Now, what in the world is a tourist going to do in a crummy place like Bongo Congo? Dump! Crummy place? Why, this is the most unheard of thing I've ever heard of! I uh, beg pardon, sire. But perhaps the American tourist is unaware of the many points of interest in Bongo Congo. Yes, perhaps you are unaware of the many points of interest in Bongo Congo. Like what? Like what? Like the... 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 the tell him, true blue oldie. Of course, sire. Well, there's the, uh, the, the... Yes, King Leonardo and Odie Colony had suddenly realized that there were no points of interest in Bongo Congo. Back in the royal throne room, they discussed the shocking realization. No wonder we never get any tourists. No wonder we never get any new citizens. What have we to offer? Confound it, this is terrible! We must do something at once, sire. Do something? What can I do? Build a leaning tower? Put in a waterfall? Build a pyramid? Ridiculous, confound it! Ridiculous! There may be other ways, sire. If we had some form of recreation that would appeal to the tourists... Some form of recreation? Yes, sire. Perhaps water sports. By Jove, you've got it! Last one in the water is a Coco Loco. As usual, King Leonardo decided to set the example for citizens to follow. First, Odie suggested skin diving. You simply breathe through this, sire. And you can stay down for ever so long. They say there's an exciting new world down there. Yow! With the king somewhat less than happy about skin diving, Odie Colony suggested... Surfboarding, Your Majesty. You simply stand on this board and wait until the waves gently ride you into shore. Well, confound it, where are the waves? Certain now that these water sports would not attract tourists to Bongo Congo, the king felt that all was lost. All is lost. Do not despair, sire. You will find some other attraction. Confound it, there's nothing in Bongo Congo to attract any member of the human race. That's it, sire. You've said it. We'll have a race. On water? Why not on land? A cross-country race on bicycles built for two. Of course, of course. And we'll offer a giant cash prize to the winners. An unusual bicycle race is sure to attract millions of tourists. But will it also attract Biggie Rat and Itchy Brother? Will they ruin this exciting sporting event for tourists? We'll find out in our next exciting episode... 
Bye Bye Bicycle. Oh, no. It's from my cousin Percy. And he says he's coming to visit us just four weeks from now. Uh, gee, Tennessee, we got an extra bed. Uh, don't you like your cousin? It isn't that. I'd be ashamed to have my cousin in a place like this. And we haven't got any money to fix it up. Uh, don't worry, Tennessee. Maybe we'll find some money. Oh, sure, sure. Maybe some money will just come up and knock at our door. <laughs> Howdy, partners. Big Bill Bailey's the name. I hear tell you boys have a spare bed. Uh, 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 yes, that's right. Well, I'm moving to this side of the zoo for a little vacation. How's about renting me that bed for four weeks? Uh, gee, Tennessee, this is how we can make money to fix the place up. How much rent would you be willing to pay? Four dollars, and you got yourself a deal. And here's a little contract I've already drawn up. Just sign right here. Fine, fine. Here's your copy of the contract, and now I'll just go bring in my luggage. Uh, gee, Tennessee, we really are lucky. Right this way, boys. Hold it! Hold on there! You can't move all that luggage in here! Yo! Sure I can, partner. Just read the first paragraph of that contract you signed. Now, wait a minute. That's my bet. This is yours. Sorry, partner. You better read the second paragraph of that contract. It says, I get my pick of the beds. Oh, boy, Tennessee. I think you should have read that contract before you signed it. Well, it's only for four weeks. Time to get up, Chumley. I'll just brush my teeth and wash up. <laughs> Sorry, partner. Anyhow, I think you and your partner had better start cooking my breakfast. Uh, your breakfast? Paragraph four of the contract says you cook for me. Yeah! Uh, here, Tennessee, you can start the eggs. Uh, you're a good egg cook, and I, uh... That's it, partners. Nice and neat. The contract says you have to keep the place that way. And just four more pair, partners. The contract says you have to keep all my shoes shined. Come on, set up the table and break out the cards. We'll have a real party. Oh, no. There's not enough room in here for all of us. That's right, partners. According to the contract, whenever I have a party, you have to get out. We're not going to stand it anymore, Chumley. We're going to see Mr. Whoopi about that contract. And Big Bill Bailey says he'll get the law on us if we don't do what the contract says. Can he really do that, Mr. Whoopi? If the contract is good, my boy, he certainly can. That's really what the word contract means. A promise which can be enforced by law. Uh, gee, who needs laws anyway? Oh, we all need laws, my boy. Laws are simply rules, and even a game must have rules. Just imagine a baseball game without any rules. Chaos! Without rules, there would be so many arguments, the game would never end. And it's the same with life. There would be no end of trouble without laws. Sure, Mr. Whoopi, but who decides what the laws should be? Well, in ancient times, the rulers made the laws, and often these laws are very unfair to the people. Zowie! But today, in the United States, we have a voice in what our laws will become because we vote to elect the men who make our laws. Well, I don't remember voting for anybody who wanted to make laws about contracts. Of course not, Tennessee! The laws about contracts are very, very old. You see, there are two basic kinds of contracts. The first is an oral contract. Now, when you're offered to rent your spare bed at a certain price, and when Big Bill Bailey accepted your offer, that was already a contract. 
An oral or speaking contract. But then he handed me this paper to sign. Exactly, my boy. And that's the second kind of contract. A written contract. And by signing this, you have bound yourself to abide by what it says. You should always be careful to read anything before signing it. I'm afraid your only chance is for Big Bill Bailey himself to want to get out of the contract. That's it, Mr. Whoopi. We'll go back to our room and do some terrible things that will make Big Bill want to break the contract. Come on, Chumley. Wait, you mustn't do that. Two wrongs never make a right. Uh, gee, Tennessee, Mr. Whoopi said two wrongs don't make a right. Uh, if we do bad things to Big Bill, uh, maybe something bad will happen to us. Nonsense. What could happen? Mr. Whoopi says the only way we can get out of this contract is if Big Bill wants to get out of it. So we're going to make him want to get out of it. Ah, partners, you're back just in time. Place needs a good cleaning. You're right, Big Bill. Come on, Chumley. Let's clean the place up. Hey, look out! Uh, gee, Big Bill, I, I thought you were the trash basket. Yeah! Oh, sorry, Bill. I thought you were the sink. You've soaked my shirt. Now you wring it out and iron it dry. And you get this spot out of my tie. Sure, Big Bill. Cause Chumley's not a very good ironer. Look out there! It's burning! Uh, gee, Big Bill, I, I guess I put a hole in it. There you are, Big Bill. There's no spot on your tie now. Cause it's a little short. You dumb ox. First my shirt and now my tie. A little more of this kind of stuff and I'll spend my vacation somewhere else. Now cook my dinner. One dinner coming up. Uh, gee, Tennessee, what are we going to cook? What about spaghetti and meatballs? Here are some nice shoestrings for spaghetti. And we'll just cut up this bar of soap and paint it black for meatballs. <laughs> That's great, Tennessee. It really does look like spaghetti and meatballs. Here you are, Big Bill. Mm, yeah, spaghetti and meatballs, my favorite. Wow! You numbskulls! You're, you're trying to, to murder me! But I'm getting out of here! Just one minute, Big Bill. That'll be four dollars for one week's rent. Don't forget the contract. There, I never want to see this place again. Well, Chumley, at least we got four bucks, and it's enough to buy some paint to sparkle this place up a bit for my cousin Percy. Come on. Percy, I'd recognize you anywhere. You haven't changed a bit since we were kids. Howdy, partners. Great to see you. I'll just take this bed. Now, you can unpack my luggage now. There are a few things I want you to wash out and iron, so hop to it. I'm a little hungry, too, so you can start dinner while I take a little nap. Uh, gee, I guess Mr. Whoopi was right. I know. Uh, two two wrongs, wrongs don't, don't make, make a right. A right. One dark night, an unusual occurrence took place in one of our greatest cities. The clock on top of City Hall was striking 12 when suddenly it stopped and disappeared entirely. That was just the beginning. All over the country, clocks were being stolen. Big clocks, little clocks, grandfather clocks, and wristwatches. Until there wasn't a clock or a watch anywhere in the country. The results were disastrous. Planes couldn't land because they didn't know the time of arrival. Trains went right through town because they didn't know it was time to stop. But the worst disaster of all was no school. The students could not tell it was time for school. The teachers could not tell it was time for school. The principals could not tell when to ring the bell. And so there was no school at all. Officer Flynn Flanagan knew it was time to call in the hunter. Hello, I say hello. I am the hunter. Have nose, will hunt. I hunt in... in, in Oh, it's you, Flanagan. What in the cotton blooming world are you calling me so early for? What time is it, anyway? 
You don't know? Now, what kind of police are you? Uh, what? All the clocks and watches stolen. <laughs> well, by granny, that's great. I'll just go back to sleep. <laughs> what? what? Well, oh, the little children aren't going to school. Well, say, that is disastrous. Imagine none of those little old kiddies learning to read. Why, well, all they'll know how to do is watch TV. I'll get on the case right away. Uh, kind of a watch case. <laughs> Your time is my time. Yeah, you might say I've got time on my hands. <laughs> Pay attention now. Those are jokes. A real, a real... Uh, hello? Uh, hmm. Well, he hung up. True to his word, the hunter lost no time in getting on the case. He had hardly left his home when he came upon his first clue. Uh-huh, my first clue. Clocks for sale here. Of all the nerve, I'll just sneak up on them. All right now, who's in there? There's nobody here but us cuckoos. A likely story, I'm coming in. Now, who's the head cuckoo here? A little old clockmaker, me. Well, then, where are all your clocks? Well, somebody stole them. There's nothing left but cuckoos. Well, I'll just see about that. Cuckoo hunter, listen to the bitey. A bit dazed from his experience in the clock shop, the hunter was continuing on the trail of the missing timepieces when he overheard a remark that made him very suspicious. Your timing's all wrong, killer. Try it again. Timing, killer. By grannies, I've got them cold now. And the unsuspecting hunter jumped right through the window and right into the ring with Killer Kelly, who was training for a big fight. I, put, I say, put up your... Time to kill her right on the book. Your timing's right on, kid. Let him have it. Ah, kid, you're gonna be the champion. Gee, then, then maybe I could get a better sparring partner, huh? Uh, he wasn't too good, you know what I mean? Meanwhile, the fox who had stolen all the clocks and watches opened up a new company called Take Your Time Incorporated and was selling watches guaranteed to run slow. I tell you, friend, these clocks run so slow you can do a full day's work in half an hour and have the rest of the day to play. Get one for every... What's your hurry, pal? I can't stop now, son. I'm on a big case. I'm in a terrible hurry. I got just what you need, pal. Now, here's a beauty, and I can let you have it for... Just a minute there. That's my watch. Why, you wily, clever criminal. Uh-oh. Oops. Ah, sure, Hunter, and you've done it again. The fox and the clocks. Now all the little children can go back to school. Ah, how can we ever repay you? Why, well, a simple testimonial dinner and a gold watch will be fine, son. Who was that modern minute man, officer? That, me lad, was the hunter. Ah, you can always recognize him by the sound of his horn. In our last episode, to attract tourists, King Leonardo set out to interest the people in water sports by trying them himself. He tried skin diving. Yow! And then he tried surfboarding. Yow! Finally, the king had only decided to stage a unique sporting event. A race on bicycles built for two. Of course. And we'll offer a giant cash prize to the winners. Immediately, word of the race spread. Wow, Kings, he's getting smart, offering a big cash prize and a race on bikes for two. Yeah, cool, man. His one beat will have a ringside seat. Yeah, you'll have a seat, okay? Right on one of the bicycles, see? We're winning that prize money one way or another. News of Biggie and Itchy entering the race reached the King and Odie. If the villains win, sire, we'll lose all our tourist trade. For no one would again enter a race first won by those two cheaters. Then you and I will enter the race to stop them. And so on the day of the big race, the King and Odie waited at the starting line along with Biggie and Itchy and all the other racers. <laughs> those two traders will never win with that bicycle. Look at the extra weight they're carrying. But little did King Leonardo realize that this extra weight was really a concealed motor. And as the race got underway... On your mark! Get set! Ready! Quickly, Biggie Rat uncovered the motor and turned it on. And in seconds, Biggie and Itchy were far out in front. Look, sire, they've taken the lead. Oh, no. Faster, Odie, pedal faster. And away we go. Hold on, Itch. Pull over a minute. Yeah, but gee, Big, why, like, break the bike? Because I'm taking no chances, say. I'm moving that dead end, sire. <laughs> 
I dig big. Uh, you put the sign on this road, and uh, those kooks will, uh, like, uh, end up at a dead end. Turn here, Odie. But, sire, I think... Turn, confound it, turn! While the king and Odie and the other riders were disentangling themselves, Biggie and Itchy zoomed confidently on their way. Uh, gee, Big, this motorcycle bike is like a cool tool. Those guys will never catch... Hey, Big, our power's poop. Pad off, Slowpoke. I'll push. But I think we're gonna... I got you, Big. I got you. Let go of me, you pedal punk. Take your hands off my... I think uh, something went wrong, Big. Uh, I think something went wrong, Big. You old numbskull. Now we'll have to use the fly plan. The fly plan? Right. We're taking a shortcut over Bottomless Canyon. Now, let's go. And moments later, at the edge of Bottomless Canyon, Biggie put his fly plan into action. All right, Itch. Start flapping. Uh, gee, Big, uh, I'm more like a flipper than a flapper. Flap, wing, wing. Uh, okay, Big, I dig. And as Itchy began flapping, the special wings Biggie had brought, their bicycle began soaring across the canyon. Look, sire. Biggie and Itchy are crossing the canyon. If they do that, they'll be right at the finish line. What can we do? Wait, sire. I have a plan. Quickly, Odie Colony made a lasso from the rope he carried. Then, whirling the lasso, Odie sailed it through the air and lasso the wings right out of Itchy's hands. Biggie and Itchy were finally out of the race, and only moments later, the winners crossed the finish line. The winners, those two wacky mechanics from America, Orville and Wilbur Long. Isn't it wonderful, sire? Two Americans won the race. Now we're certain to have millions of American tourists in Bongo Congo. Yes, once again, the King and Odie had outwitted Biggie and Itchy. But what new schemes will they scheme to make themselves rich? Don't miss the next exciting episode of The King and Odie. Oh, oh.